we have hidden in the shadows long enough. We must stand up to this regime once and for all. Hi, this is Andy Burkowski for VGS on Talk Radio AM 640, and today we are talking about Superheroes! Who are we talking to today, sir? It's Adam Rubano. I'm the senior producer on the Superheroes game. <laughs> <laughs> and Justice God's Among Us, for anyone who can't uh, make that out. Very important question. Yep. Who is your favorite superhero? Superman. It's a, it's a generic answer, but it's true. Now, who would win in this battle here? That's something me and uh, Zach were debating before we got a chance to talk to you. Who would win, in your opinion? Well, if we did our job, it'll be even. See? What a good answer. Yeah. But given that I was Superman for the first 10 Halloweens of my life, it's <laughs> Superman wins. <laughs> now, for anyone that's very confused with all these Superman references, what is this game about? So, uh, this is NetherRealm Studios. We're the creator of Mortal Kombat. This is our take on the DC universe. So, this is a, a gritty cinematic experience where you finally get to battle out your favorite superheroes and supervillains against each other in this awesome, realistic world. Now, for fans, you know, more than fans, for those who are the flock of aficionados for Mortal Kombat. Yep. Will this game feel exactly the same as Mortal Kombat, or what have you done to make it so it's its own standalone game? Yeah, so it's actually substantially different. Mm -hmm. uh, we wanted to make sure the game was accessible because we know that a lot of people coming to this superhero genre aren't going to necessarily be fighting game players. Yeah. So it's both accessible, and we've also added a new mechanic that is unique to not only Mortal Kombat, but, but fighting games. Mm -hmm. So the environments themselves uh, are completely and totally interactable. So you can pick up cars from the background, you can uh, jump off of objects, each character interacts with the objects in unique ways. It's a very simple mechanic, just one button and your character just does something cool with the background, but that adds a whole new level of depth and just kind of fun to the experience. How do you bridge that gap with something that is so polarizing as Mortal Kombat, those who know every sort of permutation of button matches, yeah. and those who are kind of new and just they want to play as the Joker and they want to be part of this experience? How do you really bridge that gap and still make both of those experiences just as fun? Yeah, so for the Mortal Kombat fan, there's sort of two things that we knew we had to do. Mm -hmm. We didn't want uh, fatalities, but we need, knew we needed to have over-the-top moments. So there's these awesome things called super moves where Superman punches somebody into space. <laughs> you see the shot you know, of the Earth, and then he punches them back down to Earth. Each character has sort of those moments. In, uh, in addition, the obvious thing we have to do is make the fighting game experience fun, good, and very solid, and that's what we've definitely accomplished on this game so that it translates to Mortal Kombat fans. And within any sort of Mortal Kombat game, there are those who are just learning and able to play at a certain level. Are you still providing um, that experience for someone who can essentially get better at this game? So there are people who would be considered pros, essentially. So yeah. there is still, you, it's not as if someone who's just coming in and smashing 13 buttons at a time <laughs> can beat someone who's been playing this for a year and a half. Yeah, right? so Injustice, you know, it does bridge that gap, uh, I think, better than any game out there. So not only do we have that entry level experience, but we've been bringing pro, pro players, mm -hmm. uh, the best in the world, in for months uh, to play this game, to beat on it, to give us their opinions, to adjust the game. So. Uh, that game is there for those that can achieve that level of, of ability, but for the rest of us, uh, <laughs> it's just a fun experience. Absolutely. Now, what has been, in your opinion, the most hilarious matchup? Because I know you have a huge roster of superheroes, and for some of the videos I've seen, there's been absolutely, <laughs> when Harley Quinn's destroying, like, there's really, really funny moments. For you personally, what has been the most resonatingly uh, humorous moment? <laughs> uh, well, ignoring any bugs that we might have had that have been yeah, funny. Yeah, let's not think about yeah. that. <laughs> uh, any of the Harley Quinn versus the larger character mm -hmm. moments to yeah. me are just awesome because you get a big, huge character like Grundy who's coming in for an attack and just grabs this tiny little creature that is Harley and it just ends up being this, this hilarious moment because she'll have this comeback and then just destroy this giant zombie uh, using you know cupcakes and, and a little pop gun and just it it turns out to be these sort of endearing but hilarious moments. For someone who has played a lot of the uh, previous Mortal Kombat games, the actual experience when they're in game when they're playing. What will be the first most noticeable difference? Uh, so for any hardcore sort of Mortal Kombat fan, mm -hmm. the biggest difference is going to be back to block. Okay. So yeah. Mortal Kombat has traditionally been known for a block button. Now you have to hold back or, or down, and that's such a, it's such a game changer. Like, you'll adjust fairly quickly, but it changes the whole way the sort of moves transition and moves flow. So that's going to be the first thing they'll see. One of my favorite games always with any sort of Mortal Kombat game, or just even a fighting game in general, is when you have those instances where you change set pieces, mm -hmm. where it's like what you're saying of the special move, but it's happening throughout the game. Is that going to be uh, coming back? And what are some examples of some great instances of that? Yeah, so uh, my favorite example is 
uh, I was mentioning earlier the environments are, are extremely important. So the environments actually evolve as the fight goes on. A good example is uh, the Bat Cave. So in the lower level called Bat Cave Lagoon, there's this generator hanging from the ceiling. So big characters can jump up and chuck this generator to the ground and do damage. Well, from that point on, there's these live wires that are dangling around the, f the fighting arena, so it becomes this danger zone. So anytime you hang out underneath them, you can get popped up and electrocuted. So that's, there's tons of examples of that you know, featured throughout the game of the gameplay actually evolving as the fight goes on. For someone who perhaps doesn't really buy into the whole fighting game trope, for someone who you know, appreciated Mortal Kombat but really didn't get into it, what are you doing to appeal to them? How can they feel like this is an experience that they'll still enjoy. Yeah, so that's, uh, that's one of our driving goals, is yeah. we want to expand the genre. Mm -hmm. So uh, it starts with story mode. So we have this epic campaign that's written by the NetherRealm guys, plus Jimmy Palmiotti and Justin Gray from DC. It is this epic story uh, that is, it's huge and awesome. Uh, and then, <laughs> it's huge and awesome, yeah, folks. Sure you, you can quote that. me on that. <laughs> huge and awesome. uh, beyond that, there's uh, plenty of single player content, actually tons of single player content. There's something called Star Labs Missions, uh, which are these uh, one-off stories that we tell for each character that have totally unique offline gameplay. So one mission might be just standard combat, a different mission might be this asteroids type shooter, another one might be a third person type shooter, so there's just this wealth of content for somebody that isn't necessarily great at fighting games to explore and to spend dozens and dozens and dozens of so hours. So for on. anyone coming in thinking it's just going to be exhibition mode with superheroes, that's, they're entirely off the mark. That's yeah. exactly the opposite, in fact. Exactly. You know, we've yeah. worked from day one on single player content. You mm -hmm. know, we've got the competitive level down. It's really about you know, expanding the experience so that people who are, you know, never played a fighting game have plenty of value and, and can spend weeks playing this game. What is your hope for the player? They first jack in, it's first going in, starting to play, sit down, what do you want that experience to be like? The first five hours for you, what is the resonance that you're looking for? So the first five hours, I hope people start with story mode and they get a chance to see not only sort of this epic tale we've woven, mm -hmm. but also get to see that we really are shooting for the cinematic vision and they experience that. So mm -hmm. it's, it's gritty, it's realistic, the graphics engine is, is new and awesome, and we really want it to feel like there's these two superheroes battling it out. And you'll see that immediately because you know the buildings will start crumbling around you based upon your actions, the characters are going to get beat up and damaged. It's going to feel like a movie from the first fight. Absolutely. Now when is Injustice Gods Among Us coming out and for what systems? April 16th. You can play it on the Xbox 360, the PS3, and the Wii U. Pretty much everything you want. Thank you very much for taking the time. I Thank do you, appreciate man. it. Andy Burkowski here for Talk Radio AM640 VGS. Make sure you pick up Injustice Gods Among Us. Injustice Gods Among Us. Rated T for T. Yes, Aquaman got mad sharks!